Good evening. I'm going to call the select board uh, meeting back to order for Monday, March 4th, 2024. Uh, we were in executive session and we did not take any specific action on item A. And on item B, uh, we move to uh, accept those minutes. I would now um, ask you all to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> and then as required by open meeting law, you are hereby informed that the town will be video and audio taping as well as live broadcasting this public meeting. In addition, anyone in the audience who plans to video or audio tape this meeting must notify the chairman prior to the start of the meeting. Hearing nobody, I would... Um, Ask anybody for public comments and announcements. Anyone have any? Cindy? Good evening, Cindy Williams, Executive Director of the Harwich Chamber. Just a few announcements tonight. Um, in front of the select board is a flyer. It's also been emailed and on social media. Next Wednesday, the 13th of March, the <coughs> chamber is celebrating its 65th anniversary. We're having a celebration at the chamber, 11 to 2 and invite all to stop by for cake, cupcakes, and some goodies from Hot Stove. Both Senator Sear and State Rep Sarah Peake will be on hand. It's an opportunity to learn about the chamber, if you've ever been curious, and to also celebrate um, for all we do for our members and community. Next, um, I can't believe it's already eight, almost April, but the toast is April 20th next month. Tickets are on sale, so certainly if you haven't gotten them, uh, we're back at the Waquasset Resort and Golf Club uh, April 20th, Saturday, 6 to 10. And I know you're all wondering why I have a pink flamingo in my hand. Um, <laughs> you know, why not? Carol <coughs> Carolyn always has all the fun stuff over at the community center, so I thought I would join in. Um, this year we're doing a new marketing initiative uh, for the month of May. It's called Harwich is a Wonderland. This came from a premise that many of you have already heard. My assistant calls me Alice. I go down a rabbit hole and we never know what's coming back up. But this one is to promote and showcase our members as we, many of them gear up for the season and our community. One of the highlights is the other flyer in front of all of you. It's the weekend of May 10th through the 12th. And it's an adapted version of Alice in Wonderland. It will be a play called Wonderland, which will be at Mont Blue Hall at Pilgrim Congregational. Other things are we're doing with the libraries, book signings with our cast. The Garden Club is doing a mom, queen of our hearts, bouquet making, and many other things throughout the month. This is um, another way to market the members as well as the community. We are open year round and here for the residents and members, our businesses, organizations, and the town. Hope you'll all come by next Wednesday and come out and enjoy the month of May as Harwich is a Wonderland. Thank you. Anybody else for public comment? Madam Chair, if I may. Oh, hold on one moment. We have somebody coming to the podium. Okay. Hi, good evening. Um, Julie Wittes, the Director of the Council on Aging. Um, and I'm here tonight to invite you, the select board, and also our town administrator, and the community as well, to um, one of two trainings that we have coming up, one in March and one in April, um, to our Dementia Friends training. This is a, uh, a movement that is small right now, but we're hoping is growing larger. Um, so basically, the, uh, our, our social worker, our social services coordinator, is training people um, in small groups at a time. We're starting with um, a few residents from the community who've taken the training, our COA staff, our board will be trained, um, and we're hoping more residents will choose to come to more trainings that we offer in the future. And if I, any of you would like to come, we welcome you as well. Um, so Dementia Friends is part of a global movement that is changing the way that people think, act, and talk about dementia. Um, it's just a one hour interactive training session. Um, and the intention is that you learn a bit about what it's like to live with dementia and then that understanding hopefully will turn into some action and it could be a very small action. Maybe you just interact with someone a little bit differently at the grocery store. Maybe you're moved to take bigger action along the way. 
Um, so the trainings that we have coming up, um, the first one is Friday, March 29th, 12.30 to 1.30 in the afternoon, and these will take place at the Council on Aging or in the community center. The room, exact room will be announced the day of. Um, and then the next one will be Tuesday, April 30th, 10 to 11 a.m. Um, and again, just to be clear, you only have to attend one. These are just two options to give people choices. Um, and then uh, the other announcement that I have to make tonight is that our friends group, the Friends of the Council on Aging, has agreed to fund a comprehensive needs assessment for the Harwich older adult population. Um, so we're really excited about that. I, I'm, it seems like the timing is not quite going to be <laughs> um, uh, on time to make the uh, give the results in time for the local comprehensive plan, but. Um, hopefully we'll be able to use some information from that to better inform the needs assessment and also you know be able to take the information from both to um, to help shape the needs of Harwich older adults going forward um, so we are planning to work with uh, UMass Boston Institute of gerontology they have a center for social and demographic research on aging and they've done over 50 needs assessments across the state um, for other councils on aging in other towns. Um, they've done several on Cape Cod, including one in Chatham and one in Brewster, um, just within the last year or two, actually. Um, so we're, they're, they're really the place that you go for this sort of thing. Um, and we're planning to get started in September of 2024. If it's something that you um, agree would be necessary or, or beneficial to our town. Um, and um, there would be a, a, a period of time when key stakeholders would be interviewed, and of course you would be involved in that process, um, and we hope that you would look forward to participating, and then um, really the researchers sort of take it from there, interview people in the community, send out questionnaires, um, wrap together the findings, and then present things uh, back to the community. So we're, we're looking forward to that very much. How many other towns have done that, do you know? Um, I don't know the figure across the state as a whole, but on Cape Cod, I think it's uh, it's less than five that have done the needs assessments on Cape Cod. Yeah, it's that's like four important. or five. Yeah. yeah, that's wonderful, thank you. Thank you. And the um, person online who had something, Cara. is it Kara? Oh, I can't see. Yes, Hi, Cara. Director of Cultural Affairs, Kara Maloney. I uh, just wanted to give our March update. Um, we did launch our first digital newsletter on March 1st, so we shared it via our socials along with uh, both websites through the Cultural Districts and the 204. Um, we have added links kind of here, there, and everywhere, sending it out to our email subscribers in addition to those that have signed up uh, through our social media campaign that we did in the fall. Um, it really pretty much held kind of what's happened and then where we're going and what's kind of going on right now. So we do have a lot of classes that take place on a weekly basis. First and foremost, the recreation department still has their programming pretty much seven days a week. Uh, we also work with the Cape Cod Municipal Health Group through the administration office where they provide various classes and programs for folks through that service. And we also have uh, two artists in Studio 211 that offer quilting and rug braiding classes. Stitchology Sewing School for Kids is consistently going with classes. They'll be seeking summer programs very shortly, so that'll be set to launch um, and be announced for the summer Stitchology class. We do a, pr a portrait drop-in group with our artist Taylor Fox. That's for anyone who's willing to come in and it's a live model that sits for the class and you can just paint your portrait or whatever your medium is, whether it's paint, oil, watercolor, or sketch. And then we have a journal workshop coming up with Natalie Stafford and that's launching um, next week. It'll begin. It's four sessions. You get to sit with Natalie and learn how to have an art journal. Uh, further information on all of our classes and programs can be found at 204system.com. We do try to now with our digital newsletter and our socials, we put everything out there and we've been watching kind of the behind the scenes as far as monitoring how many people are clicking, what people are looking at, really to engage our audience moving forward. And then beyond that, we do have some very special programs for March coming up on this Friday. 
We have our new gallery opening, which is featuring Sedona Summer and our art stars. We have an opening reception March 8th, Friday from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. On Saturday, March 9th, we're hosting Punch for Parkinson's fundraiser. They have a trivia night from 6 to 9 p.m. Tickets will be sold at the door uh, with the group that's hosting the event. So you're welcome to just show up and come have some trivia fun and raise money for a great cause. And then we are welcoming the New England Society of Botanical Artists for their weekend retreat that they're going to be holding with us. This is actually all across the state of Massachusetts. Artists come together for an annual retreat, and I am so fortunate enough that they were able to choose Harwich. And that's going to be held from March 15th through the 17th. On March 16th, we welcome an educational forum presentation by Prince and Rilletta Ray, and I hope I'm saying their name right, but they're doing an educational forum on the Gold Farm School, which is in Africa, and it's a whole cultural exchange program that's taking place with the community members, and we're very happy to have them choose the 204 for their choice venue. Additionally, on some cultural district updates, uh, I'm pleased to say that we have had our first initial kickoff meeting with the Monomoy Graphic Design students, who is going to be, or who they are currently, designing the future logo of the Harwich Cultural District. So it'll be a representation logo between both cultural districts, showing that there's a bridge within Harwich, inclusive of all of the community programming and all of the um, community engagement sessions. So we actually provided the students through a sales pitch meeting all of the research and development that have taken place stretching back from 2018, all of the records that we're able to find for what people had said about Harwich and the cultural districts and so forth. So we provided that information to the students and by May we will have an unveiling of a new logo which will be designed by our Monomoy students. Next we have the unveiling of our Art Week. I'm very pleased to announce that we will be holding Harwich Art Week from April 27th through May 5th. And this year's theme of our programming is creative exploration. These flyers have started to hit the streets. More are going to be going out as we kind of redefine and fine tune some marketing. But we start with our Prelude event on April 20th with Harwich Climate Action Network, where they celebrate Earth Day. And then we will be kicking off officially Art Week on April 27th with the Health and Conservation Environment and Wellness Fair. From there, we have different various events going from a thrift and flea market, coffee and connect with creatives. We're holding a workshop for all creatives out there. So if you're interested in learning how to run a business as a creative, it's a partnership that we do with CDP of Cape Cod. Then we have our uh, pioneer day of May 1st is the hump week. And we're gonna be doing a explore shop and create where we're gonna be hosting a scavenger hunt amongst various locations within town that people can partake and then they'll win a prize. We have an open mic with Cape Cod Poetry. We'll have an abstract gallery opening, our big spring market and open house, and then ending our art week with a community paint along. Most, um, if not all of these programs will be free to the public and further information and more definition about these programs will be announced in our April newsletter as we fine tune some further information, but that is our goal for all of our events. Um, in addition, I have been able to secure all of our summer concerts at Brooks Park. So Harwich Center Cultural District will be hosting Monday nights at Brooks Park again from July 1st through August 19th. And to give a teaser of all of our musicians that we're able to secure this year, we have Juke and Jay and the Rockers, Fred Clayton and Friends, Hey Day, Rackline, Moselle, Natalia Bonfini, Monica Rizzo, and Super Soulshine. So again, that is completely funded by the Harwich Center Cultural District through the Mass Cultural Council's Cultural District Investment Grants. We're very happy to be able to provide that concert again. They all will take place 6 to 7.30 p.m. at Brooks Park, right at the gazebo, free. Just bring a blanket, a chair, and enjoy some free music. Have a good time. And lastly, we do encourage people to continue to check the website and our social media, um, and please check in on our digital newsletter. We do like to track and monitor and engage with people from a variety of places so we can see who it is that we're doing so we can give those metrics back to the Massachusetts Cultural Council. Wow. And I thank you. Thank you very much. That's <laughs> a lot of activities. So thank you very much, Karen. <laughs> One question. Absolutely. Just, my do you, pleasure. Do you um, distribute any of the newsletters over to the community center? Just I'm just thinking out loud in terms of a, a place to advertise. <laughs> Yeah, so a great question. We have not yet, and the sole purpose of that is we have had program meetings, and this is something um, internally that's kind of been worked on is how we present information to the mm -hmm. public. 
So I think further will come from that, but that is still in early development talks of how we can have this mass amount of information between all of us within the town departments mm -hmm. really being put out into the public. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank and you. Anybody else for public comment and announcement? No? Oh. Just, yeah, oh, sorry, Joe. Uh, just a, a reminder that the community forum this Thursday, March 7th at 7 p.m., uh, the community center, and this is about the phase three construction. Again, it's open to the entire community. Uh, the focus, of course, will be on the next two construction projects uh, in East Harwich. So again, Thursday, March 7th, 7 p.m., and there is a Teams link uh, online as well if you can't make it in person. Thank you, Joe. Jeff? Thank you, Madam Chair. And despite the low numbers from the last two events, I'm going to stick with it. We're going to have office hours next Wednesday night, the 13th, at the Community Center from 5.30 to, se from 530 to 7 in room 3. I believe Select Board Member McCaskill will be joining me. So please, anything you want to get off your chest, come on in and have a conversation. And it's nice to see Brewster is following suit now. Found that out this week. So, Interesting. Yeah. Trendsetters we are. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And actually, you reminded me in terms of making another public announcement that we are going to um, hold our board meeting on March, uh, instead of March 18th, it will be on the 19th on Tuesday. So I'm just putting that out there a couple weeks ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. So no one else for public comment and announcement. We can go on to the consent agenda. I move that we approve the select board meeting minutes for February 26th. Oh, we're going to hold that. Yeah. 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 So, so we are going to hold. Yeah, there's a bunch of us that want to. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we're going to hold those and everybody can send their revisions in. Perfect. And then we'll bring them back on Monday. Um, but then we'll move on to our public hearing. <coughs> so if you want to. Notice of public hearing Town of Harwich select board applicant for transfer of liquor license. Notice is hereby given under Chapter 138 of the general laws as amended that the application has been made to this board for a transfer of the annual on-premise all-alcoholic license now held by Morningstar Restaurant, Inc., DBA Villa Roma, at 278 Route 28, Harwich, Mass., 02646. Douglas Morrissey, manager, to Milano Hospitality Group, LLC, DBA Milano's Italian Kitchen, 278 Route 28, Harwich, Mass. Francis Wyasek, Jr., manager, on the following described premise located at 278 Route 28, Harwich, Mass., Building consists of three rooms for food and beverage service internally, as well as an outdoor patio for seasonal service. Patio seating in lieu of indoor seating. Total capacity not to exceed 51 seats. Liquor will be stored in a locked office on the second floor. The select board will hold a public hearing on this application. Monday, March 4, 2024, no earlier than 6 p.m. in the Griffin Room at Town Hall, Harwich Town Hall, at 732 Main Street, Harwich, Mass. 02645. Remote participation is also available. Please see the posted agenda for dial-in information. Move that we open the public uh, hearing. Second. Moved and seconded. So the public hearing is open, and we would invite you to, if you want to come to the table. Sure. Uh, or the podium, whatever, whatever you, whichever you're comfortable with. See, you brought your bartenders. <laughs> I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My muscle. <laughs> your muscle. <coughs> so welcome. Thank you. Um, He's got your notes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So this is exciting to hear. And yeah. So we'll just, uh, I don't have any specific questions, and then do, <laughs> do you have any questions? Jeff, do you have I any have questions? no questions, just excited. Don. Keep it going. Yeah. It's, it's exciting that it's not going to close for a period of time. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's such a great spot, so um, I, I don't. I think we don't want to hold you up anymore. You've been very patient. No problem. <laughs> well, can, can, can I and add so, one thing? Yeah, no, go ahead. I believe you've also um, applied for two committee positions as well. Yeah, in this I think my interview is uh, Wednesday morning. Golf and Capital Outlay? Yeah. Fantastic, Frank. Thank you. No problem. Well, they're here to give back. No. Yep. <laughs> it, it, while we're at that public portion, I'll just note that uh, the police report had no objections uh, to the transfer of the license at all. That's great. There, yeah, there are no, we have no issue with the transfer. And I'll just ask the public if anyone has anything to say. It is a public hearing, um, but we're excited for you. Thank you. The whole chamber's coming. <laughs> I just, as the director of the chamber, I just want to welcome you all. I think this is great. We're super excited. And can't wait to see when he starts work. 
<laughs> It'll be soon, believe me. Madam Chair, I move that we close the public hearing. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so let's just get, yeah, go ahead, Michael. All right. I move that we approve the transfer of the Mass General Law Chapter 138, Section 12, Annual All Alcohol Liquor License held by Morning Star Restaurant, Inc., DBA Villa Roma, Manager Douglas Morrissey, 278 Route 28 to Milano Hospitality Group, Inc., DBA Milano's Italian Kitchen, Manager Francis Wyasek, Jr. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Now just, uh, my, Mr. Morrissey is in the room tonight. Thank him for how many, is he not here tonight? I thought that was him in the back. No. <laughs> Definitely uh, thank him Florida. for his many, many, many years in Harwich and an excellent restaurant. He may still be involved. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks, everybody. Look forward to it. It's one of may, my favorite spots. May you prosper spots. and be here for a long time. Oh. <laughs> Let's hope so. You got it. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Too. Um, so on to our next, uh, oh, no, our public hearing is being postponed <laughs> till another, what, two weeks? Um, March so 11th. Is it March 11th? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to March 11th, so next week. Okay, so now we will go to our joint meeting with the select board and the bylaw charter review committee. Thank you. Order the meeting of the bylaw charter review committee for at 6:23 p.m. So I guess the best way we have different materials. We have your report, and um, we have a rather item on the um, HR position as well. So I'm going to open it up to board members with any specific questions um, for Linda, Anita, or Sandy. Uh, yeah, go ahead. yeah, if I may. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you all for being here. Um, I, I just want to mention again uh, the great work you as a committee have all done. And Linda, specifically, you and I met on Friday and neaten this up so that this could potentially be a uh, more efficient meeting where we get some things done. Um, I purposely didn't hand these out to the board members or any of you prior to this meeting because. I wanted to make sure that we all understand this is happening in real time. Thank One, you. Two, three. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Jeff. Same thing. Same one. Same thing. Yep. So. Essentially all this is, is it's just going to make it a little easier for everybody at the table to follow along. Um, so I will turn it back over, Madam Chair, to you and then let the rest of the board members have their say before I uh, mm -hmm. begin to get rolling here, if I may. Yeah. I'm just looking at this um, yeah, of course. in comparison to the other information we had. Mm -hmm. So um, if anyone else has any specific question, feel free to let me know. I'm just reading through. Um, because it looks like the two, the 231, um, which obviously is not controversial and it's the whole, um, going back to the annual election of town offices shall be called under clause 811 of chapter eight. So when I look, when I'm going through these, I went through a couple other ones mm -hmm. too. So I, I'm going to jump down actually to 353. The select board chair shall have the authority to designate from time to time one or more of its members to sign warrants for the payment of town <coughs> funds in the absence of the town administrator. As, as referenced in clause 461, the town treasurer shall be notified by the chair of this designation. So it, I guess my question there is, 
the other report then showed pro the proposed new language underneath it on, this was your older report that I have. And then it looked like it was saying, and, and I'm only asking because I was going back and forth looking and I'm like, I think the only difference in that in what the current and the proposed was to say, the select board chair shall have the authority to designate from time to time one or more of its members to sign warrants. Is that the only difference in? Well, the other differences are the current wording is includes the designation shall be by a ma majority of the board right. in a called meeting. So we're try trying trying to just give, give the chair or yes. somebody else, one of the other right. board members, the ability. So that the, the chair can delegate the signing in the absence of the town administrator right. to sign a warrant so that you can designate someone. And in the original, this written copy of this uh, vote which is what is in the current, gets filed all over the place. And so we're proposing that you be given, the chair be given the authority to designate someone. And this basically just tell the town treasurer that this is what is happening. Mm -hmm. It's a housekeeping issue. Okay. I was just looking between this one and then I'm looking at this one and I'm just trying to make sense. That's all right. And that's what I try to do, just clean it up a little bit yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Anybody else have any other questions they want to go over? I'm still reading. Oh, yeah. So, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it might be a good idea to take the first section, non-controversial yes, first. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that is, Jeff and I, when we met, we said, okay, this these should be the no-brainers. Mm-hmm. These are the ones that need a decision for this May, and there are ones that really need much more discussion. discussion right. So hold. So I, may I make a motion, madam? <laughs> yes. Okay. Excuse me. I move that the following charter changes be included in the May 2024 annual town meeting warrant. Uh, two, three, one, the annual election of town offices shall be called under clause 811 of chapter eight. The annual town meeting shall meet regularly in the first week of May to consider and adopt annual operating and capital budgets and to act on financial and other matters. The meeting shall be continued on other days until all articles in the warrant have been acted upon. As well as 353, the select board chair shall have the authority to designate from time to time one or more of its members <coughs> to sign warrants for the payment of town funds in the absence of the town administrator as referenced in clause 461. Town treasurer shall be notified by the chair of this designation. 432i change would be in the second line water department to water slash wastewater department and 443 the town administrator shall appoint the harbor master and any assistant harbor masters reason town administrator has authority to do this under 441 and 442 second second been seconded any discussion yes i think that the um 443 was should have been I would suggest was remove that line. Oh, because it's duplicative? Well, because in the town administrator's authorities, uh, the town administrator appoints the various department heads, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there is a separate line that says the town administrator shall appoint the harbor master. Well, if he appoints everybody else, why are you pulling one out? So the I think our report, as we were talking, okay, there was a sure, lot going sure. on. So you want to remove your second? Let me. Actually, and just I have a question. Okay. Go ahead. As it sits right now, Linda, does does that authority is it expressed? And any assistant harbor masters, or is it just the harbor master? Just to the harbor master. Because we may want to. Well, but then again, if the uh, respectfully, if the town administrator is supposed to be appointing all these people, there's no need to appoint. I, I we don't yeah. think there's a need to say. And he gets to appoint this one too. He's appointing all of them in his authorities. <clears throat> okay, if you're, if you're okay with it being implicit, his other duties, that's okay with me. I'll remove my second. It was put in 2014. It really isn't needed. 
Was there any? Oh, sorry. Go removal ahead. was part of your motion, right, Jeff? Re yeah, the removal of the town administrator. That's the second that I was that thinking was of. Doing, yeah. So it's the removal of four, four, three. Okay, so we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And four zero, Madam Chair. <laughs> four zero. Thank sorry. Uh, make a motion on this one, and then we can go in the discussion. Yeah. I move that the following bylaw change be included in the May 2024 annual town meeting warrant. 271-16, votes of the Select Board and Finance Committee establishing recommendations regarding town meeting articles shall be printed in the warrant with each individual's recorded vote. Second. First and second. Any discussion? I think we're just doing it by numbers now, aren't we? So, no. Mm -mm. Now. Uh, well, the, the town meeting article 55 of May 2019 annual town meeting passed that rather than saying the select board vote is 5032, had to have individuals' names in them. This cleans up the charter, the bylaw language, which was never changed. Got it. So is this housekeeping? So can, my only question on that though, so I understand what you're doing, but can we change that bylaw without any kind of? Um, it's derivative of the charter, so yeah. I just wanna make sure we don't step out of line on anything so as long as as long as we're in accordance with the process then I'm fine with it just want to make sure um, any other discussion nope. all in favor aye aye aye, aye. Uh, to to yeah I move that the following charter changes be included in the May 2024 annual meeting town warrant chapter 3-7-1 include the language that the human resource position will report to both the select board and the town administrator in chapter 3-6-1 add to the list of appointments made by the select board the position of human resource second so in terms of going forward with this charter change weren't we talking about doing this in the fall that's because the the timing we wouldn't have sorry go ahead yeah i wondered that myself but i, I mean i don't see any harm i'm not sure what you guys feel uh, i don't see any harm establishing a process before we actually establish the position and fund it and we were asked by the select board to work up the language mm -hmm. which we did in a memo to you with those charter change languages you know, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't harm anything because you've got to nope. wait until next year for it to go through the ballot anyway. So. Absolutely. So, I mean, if you want to hold it to a fall town meeting, you won't lose any time because it still has to go through the May 2025 ballot, right. regardless of whether it's the May 2024 town meeting or a fall 24 town meeting. So. You don't lose time by making that decision. Right. So moving it to the fall town meeting loses nothing in no, the sense yeah. of the whole process of what we have to go through. Don? The only thing I'll point out, it's a practical thing, is, is something I think everybody in this room has seen before. If we give people the, the inclination that there's movement and that we're working towards the human resources uh, person, that's a discussion that doesn't have to happen because I swear if there's, if there's nothing in this warrant about that, we're gonna waste a lot of time explaining it's gonna be in the fall meeting and have everybody debating whether they wanted it now or later. We're not establishing the position because we don't have the position description and we don't have the app appropriation. But it'd be nice to just say we're establishing the process and this I, is how it's gonna work. I would also say that if you do fund it and it passes town meeting, you will be hiring someone who will have the upfront understanding that there is a change coming rather than hire someone and then change on them. I think it makes more sense to set the process up so you hire somebody that actually knows what is coming down the pike and can fairly assess whether or not they want the job or not. Thank you, Linda. Michael, did you have a comment? Yeah, just comment that if we can get some of this done on an annual, I don't see why we would wait. 
So if some of this work can be done, we may as well do it. If not less. Unless there's no time to do so. I say we should tackle some of them now. Okay, so do we have a motion? I made the motion. I second it. Second it. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero, Joe. I move that the following charter changes be included in the May 2024 annual meeting town warrant. Chapter 2-2-2. Warrants will be mailed to all households. Second. Who seconds? Dawn seconded. Uh, moved and seconded. Discussion? Michael? We've only had one conversation about this that the public's been aware of. Um, we have no cost associated with this, so this is a bit premature in my mind. Thank I you. I think that there's, we discussed other avenues uh, on distribution and mm -hmm. this would be one more thing in my opinion that 70 percent of the people throw in the trash with the rest of their junk mail uh, they could be they could be distributed a lot better around town hall community center uh, website any number of places if we if we get a timeline that works so that we can get them out there quicker but mailing them to every household for me i think is a waste of town and money uh, jeff yeah, I would say that um, until there's a cost associated with it, I don't, or, or more public hearings, meetings on this, I don't, I don't think it needs to be in this May 2024 meeting. I think there are other avenues to get people, people <coughs> hands on. John? I was just coughing. Oh, I, I didn't know if you wanted to say something. I, I, I could go either way, but I mean, I, I get Michael's point. We've had a discussion last week or two. We're so far behind in so many things that it's kind of, difficult to believe that we'll be able to have these kinds of discussions for all of these all the other one articles and everything else before the main meeting I mean that's kind of why we're talking about a mm -hmm. fall meeting because it's just we're up against it yeah I'm I'm not in favor of of mailing it to households I think it's an added expense at a point where you know there's plenty of things we need to spend money on I feel like they are all over the different town buildings. They're on the website. It's easily accessible in that sense. And, you know, for those people who aren't computer, and I myself don't like to look at, read things on the computer all the time. I like a hard copy. But I can go to town hall and I can get it. I can go to the community mm -hmm. center. So that's my rationale for it. Thank you. Don? It's not an argument. I'm just coming out and saying because the timing is exactly at the same place. We are obligated to send out the ballot by mail. So if we're mailing, I mean, now you're talking about an increment. You're not talking about the responsibility of mailing. You have to send, the uh, legal counsel told us that we had to. So something's got to be mailed already around the exact same time. But it's not as large as the warrant. Yeah, I'm, I'm just pointing it out. We're not going to do anything tonight about it. Matt, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. um, some of these motions are to get a decision made, mm -hmm. thumb up or thumb down. Yeah. And so if that's the decision of the board, we're okay with that because it is your decision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next one, Jeff. So we haven't voted on that. Oh, on sorry. <laughs> well, I can true a second. I mean, I, I suggest yeah. that we just wait until the fall meeting because okay. we're, not, we're not in a position to do any of this so right now. So we don't now. need to mm -hmm. vote. A motion but no second, so it's yeah. not Whew. So right. I, I to Linda's point, they're trying to get a gauge on what thumb up, thumbs up and well, thumbs down Well, then we down should is. go to a negative, so we'll go backwards. So basically it's so someone someone in favor is go. an I, anyone that right. else is a no, and it does not carry, and then they'll have the message. All right, let's just go okay. to that. So It's more than anything because we, we did this report, so the committee is wanting to kind of close, yeah. mm -hmm. close yeah. the discussion on certain yeah. topics. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, so. I move that the following charter change be included in the May 2024 annual meeting town warrant. Chapter 2-2-2, warrants will be mailed to all households. I'll second it, but I, I, I have a different right. purpose than Michael. I was just, uh, in seconding it, I'm going to just say I'd like to get some public sentiment on it and not to just kill it off entirely. Is that ultimately, I'm, I'm curious about how many other towns, not just on the Cape, but how many other towns, period, mail out these things uh, to the public in their towns uh, in whether or not we've actually reached out to the public to ask them how they felt about whether that's an improvement or it's just a cost. Jeff? 
Thank you. So mm -hmm. for the purpose of what I, th I'm sorry, did you? Uh, just here again, if we have a discussion about this over the summer, this could go into a fall town meeting. <clears throat> Nothing is lost. Right, so, but yeah. you want us to take a, you want us for, to for take a vote to just. Meeting, yeah. For this town meeting, meeting. Right. Sure. just kind so, of make some decisions yeah. for this town right. meeting. So. And, and that's exactly what I was going to say. We, we don't lose anything and we can bring it back. So there was my motion. I believe you seconded it. Okay. Reluctantly. So <laughs> Reluctantly. All in favor. I'm in, mm, nothing. So anybody in favor? Okay. So. In the spirit of what zero. you said, it's, it's zero four. Zero four, yeah. I move that the following charter change be included in the May 2024 annual meeting town warrant. Chapter 2-8-1. All new positions, additions to staff, and changes from part-time to full-time be included in the town meeting warrant as separate articles. I'll second it, but it's the same discussion. I would like to have a public discussion about this. And I'm not sure that the whole board feels the same way, but it can't be done for this. There's just not enough time. Okay, Michael? Uh, we've had extensive uh, public discussion on this. Uh, as a matter of fact, this, the board has voted with the exception of one new member, no on this before. It's micromanaging the town administrator. And there was a, a push by a few uh, at last budget cycle where I believe we had nine new positions go to town meeting. Uh, it, was, it was driven, I believe, by uh, a few individuals and finance committee supported it and a, and a few on there. So there was extensive conversation. And then not one question on town meeting floor the first night on nine new positions. We hire a town administrator to do a job. This falls in the purview of his job or her job, whomever right. sits in the seat. And we should not be micromanaging the town administrator on, on that level at all. The, the, the mechanism at town meeting is a very simple amendment to the budget. So somebody could call that out if they don't mm -hmm. agree with a new position. Right. We should not be taking that right away from Agreed. Um, so you've got them. Did you make? You made the motion. Made the motion. And I guess my other point is that we're going to have a new member soon, and that's a discussion we can have again. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to vote <coughs> with you guys to not do it because it's not going to happen for this town meeting. Okay. So all you seconded it, right? Yeah, we're going to do the same strange right, thing. Right. All in favor? Zero four. Joe. I move that the following general bylaw change be included in the May 2024 annual meeting town warrant, chapter 7-2. Specify the reports inf slash information to be included in the warrant and reported to town meeting. Uh, proposed budget and anticipated receipts, capital plan, sources and uses, uses of funds, statements of activity on all revolving funds, including balances for prior fiscal year and at the close of the previous calendar year. Second. Moved and seconded. Any, Michael? Joe, uh, through you, Madam Chair. Yeah. What is not currently included? Because we have increased the documentation going to town meeting for the past few years. Is there something missing that's being asked? And if so, well, what? I, if I may, uh, if this is the charter, <coughs> chapter seven is appointed agencies. So that's committees. So sources and uses is not tied to a committee. But that is something the board could instruct to have in the warrant. Um, bylaw, this is a bylaw, Chapter 7 administration, not a charter. Sorry, I thought I heard the member say a charter change. I very well may have. Let me no, read it. No, you said again. bylaw. Let, did I say bylaw? Yeah. Thank you. I had to look myself, Joe. Thank you. Did sorry. I make yep. a mistake? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my question remains. I, yeah, go ahead. What, what don't we give already? I, I, I'm not clear on this. I don't know that I can answer that. I would imagine, based on the list here, I don't know that we expressly identify budget and anticipated receipts directly. We do put them in tables in various articles. Um, the capital plan is usually Appendix C. Mm -hmm. Um, sources and uses of funds, that's not an official term. That's a worksheet that mm -hmm. we work off of every year. So that, 
that could be included and then statement of activity. I think some format, I, I don't think I understand the question directly. Are you asking what's in there and what's not? Yeah. I believe capital plan is in there. I don't believe the others are expressly in there. Okay. But I could be wrong. The, bud the budget is in there, obviously. Uh, re receipts are not. There was a point, I know when I sat on the board, we did get a receipts schedule in the warrant to showing where the various pieces of the money is coming from to fund this $85 billion. Mm -hmm. And it disappeared. So there is, right at this point, there might be a receipt information here or there, but it's not a, we have this much of a budget, and here's where all the information, all the receipts are coming from on one page, um, which is effectively the sources and uses report. Or you can call it a worksheet, but the sources and uses could go in there, as could the detail, of some level of detail on the receipts, so like there's, $16 million worth of local receipts being planned for this budget or being proposed. The 10 line items for what those are, people don't know what they are. So I think there is information that could be put in the warrant that would be very helpful to the population to see where the money is coming from to fund all of these activities and expenses of the town. If it would be easier at this point to just put in the receipts and the sources and uses, because those are just one-pagers. You have all that information. <coughs> those are just adding one to two pages to the warrant and hold on the revolving funds for this town meeting warrant because that is a, that could be, that's more thought being put into presentation, et cetera, et cetera, and hold that for next year. Was, sorry. I would, I would just uh, echo last comments. I believe this to be a board decision. I believe this to be the information is available to the members of the public that want it. Uh, there's extensive discussion on budget uh, going on now for the next month. Mm -hmm. None of this information is hid it, hidden. And uh, I, I don't see why the board, and we've done this uh, through the current town administrator, <coughs> over the past few years, we've added more and more mm -hmm. to the information in, in the book. To put it in the charter, and I'm just gonna say it, I, I believe that there's members of the, of the uh, charter bylaw review that are doing this because of their um, opinion of the current town administrator, and I don't support this whatsoever. And I take umbrage at that, Mr. McCaskill. Uh, that's fine. Stop that. I mean, we have to, these things are not being done because somebody has a bone to pick. We are doing things on an upboard level, things that we think, and it's also not a charter change, it's a bylaw change. Because in the bylaw itself, Chapter 7 2, does already require expenditures have been made, balance of appropriations, it's got a whole bunch of stuff in here for current report of financial condition. So I can, I think that's saying that. People can find it if they want to. Why not just put it out there in the warrant so people don't have to find it if they want to? That's, I'll stop there. Well, and I would just say that I, I if I, yep. I would just say that um, I believe you with what you just said. There's information out there, written, public, and a quest that contradicts what you just said, and I'll leave it at that. Fine. As far as the, it's there if they want it and they can find it. I cannot tell you over nine years, uh, maybe five times, probably from three of the same people, the people that have asked for that information. And I do believe that that would be a board discussion. Doesn't have to be a bylaw change, because that, that is micromanaging in the bylaw. That could be a board policy or a board vote without trying to add this to that document and have that information available. So as far as a bylaw change, all I'm saying is I don't support it because I don't think it needs to be in that document. Okay. However, this board having the conversation and making it more readily available or adding it to the warrant is a different discussion. Yep. And I'm perfectly happy with that decision. However, I do know that at a meeting a couple of weeks ago, 
I asked for the what was in the $16 million of local receipts, and there was nothing anywhere, and it came out, I think, two weeks later. There's the $16 million. Great. But that wasn't in the, so I had to ask, I did ask for that publicly, and eventually it did show up. So I'm not sure that this information is that readily available. Well, I would so, say, go ahead. So I, I, if you don't, you know, we're, we proposed a bylaw change. Mm -hmm. If you would like to handle it on a different basis and still provide that information to the public because this information, it's not just the board voting on a budget. It's the townspeople, the voters who live here and are paying taxes are voting on the budget. I would think that you would want as much information in their hot little hands as would be possible so they can make an educated and informed decision and support what you are putting forth. Thank you, Linda. <coughs> Jeff. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to disagree a little with Select Board Member McCaskill here. and I, I spent a lot of time with Linda and a lot of time on this, and I did not get the feeling uh, that this was anything other than uh, what I feel is the same thing that you and I, I feel the exact same way you do with respect to transparency, information, honesty, and all that. And I'm not suggesting Select Board McCaskill isn't trying to be those things. Mm -hmm. I just think we need to get away from some of the narrative and just deal with how I've been looking at this. I'm trying to sway everybody to look at it this way. Let's just be as transparent as possible. Let's give as much information as possible. This doesn't sound like a heavy lift. It sounds like a one pager to me. I could be totally wrong since this is my first time going through this. But I don't, I don't find this to be anything significant to even discuss. I think what we did is cleaned up what, what the ask was. If I may, Madam Chair, I think really what we're looking at is anticipated receipts and sources and uses funds. That, that's what we're now to. So I, I, I would be in favor of, of making it available everywhere we possibly can. Uh, Michael? I just I want, to get, I want to get it on the record because Linda said it and I believe Jeff just said it. Nowhere did I say we should hide this from the board. No, I said oh, you didn't no, say that. No, nobody Nowhere said did that. I say that it shouldn't be readily available to everybody that wants to see it. And then I would pull the room and ask how many times people have asked for this and not gotten it. And my real point here is, does it need to be a bylaw? Right. Or can it simply be a transparency mm -hmm. exercise and a vote of the board for the town administrator and the finance department to put it forward? Does it need to be a bylaw? And then if it does, maybe it'll, in the, in the quest for a, a charter commission, maybe it'll get done then. I don't see how we're not giving it to the general public now. And the comments about it being um, late or two weeks late or whatever late, might I remind everybody that actually knows that's in this room, we have been a little behind in that division from lack of a treasurer. So you asked for it, you got it. We still have three months before town meet, roughly? No, we have to. We, we There'll be, there'll be a lot of time and a lot of distribution of numbers, and that's what we always do. So there's no lack of transparency whatsoever unless people aren't paying attention to the many, many meetings that we're discussing. This. I, I think, Michael, that I, I think what we were trying to do as far as the bylaw was concerned is maybe give it a little bit more language to it. It wasn't like going to change really anything, just kind of adding a little more to it to help people more understand and be a little bit more transparent. Because we already have the bylaw there. It's just adding a little bit more language to it. That's all. Thank you, Anita. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Uh, Don? Let me start off by saying I don't think anybody's trying to hide anything. Uh, so that, let's get that off the table. Um, on the other hand, the final statement is statements of activity on all revolving funds, including balances for the prior fiscal year and at the close of the previous calendar year. As you well know, I've been asking that forever. I can get summary numbers, but even we don't know how that got to the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So I'd be hugely in favor of a sheet of paper that just shows, because we got a million something dollars worth of 
revolving money going around out there. And it is not, as many people feel in their own organizations, their money. It's the town's money. And I'd love to be able to give them the same kind of level of detail we do in a regular budget. It's okay, you give us three quarters of a million dollars and we're gonna give you a police department that has this many people in it and this is what we're spending stuff on. So I'm just gonna personalize it. I don't know that I'm getting that information. So uh, I'm gonna say that to me, uh, I don't see a need to expand on a bylaw. Knowing how many bylaws we have and adding more information to them, I, I think that overall we give a budget, we give a capital plan, we have sources and uses, you know, and some of that information did come later, but even free cash has been later, in, you know, than mm. in other years. So, you know, this is a process that we go through annually, and sometimes when we've had different changes and we've had, uh, everybody knows every town's having a tough time with staff trying to get new staff. So we're not immune to any of those things. I don't like to memorialize more and more in a bylaw when I think it can be covered in a policy. And I think when we're going to town meeting, when we're saying certain, you know, certainly certain people are more attuned, I would say yourselves included and, and us, are more attuned to all the different financials. I would say that there's a lot of people who, who aren't, right? And so, you know, loading the warrant with all this excess information, we may love it, but it, I don't think it's necessary because we know where to get it. To everybody's point, nobody's hiding anything. Everything's in packets, public packets. You know, we sat here Saturday talking about numbers and we're pouring over them. Some of them for the first time that we're really delving into. So to have a bylaw and, and feel like we're even backed further into a process of trying to meet all these deadlines, it's difficult enough. So I, I just don't see the need for a bylaw to add more. That having been said, this is the same category to me as everything else. We don't have enough time to be able to, yeah. to deal with this for this meeting coming up. Because it, it is, you have to print the warrant mm -hmm. in about three and a half weeks. Would it be possible just to put the anticipated receipts in there? That is already existing information. And, and while I agree with you that this information is in packets, you know, you end up with a packet that has 300 pages in it, and the average person isn't going to look through that. But getting the final numbers in the warrant, even for receipts, where does the money come from? Mm -hmm. I think would be an incredibly important thing to do because it's not just for the people, the few people who might understand it. It's providing the information so that, that our public can educate themselves. And face it, an awful lot of us don't look that far for information, all of us included. Well, if so, it's a munis report, no one wants it, it, to yeah, but See, <laughs> I can, I can, can read that. that. Agree on. <laughs> yeah, I see, you can read that. Michael? Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Just on the one point about the revolving funds yeah. that Don brings up, um, it was probably two years ago, maybe three, I still have the email so I could pull it up. I put in a FOIA request asking about how this money was being spent. And the answer I got back from the finance department was we don't have that information, which is obviously absurd. But I never got it. I don't know that anybody on this board has ever seen an accounting of what goes in and out of those revolving funds. And as Don says, there's over a million dollars just floating around as just kind of play money. So you might want to think about addressing that. Michael? So Linda, thank you. You made a great argument. And it's something that I think that we should bring forward as a board to make a request and try and get that information into the warrant as much as we can. But I still do not believe we need to add to a bylaw. But I hear you, and there's really no reason why we can't ask for that to be in the warrant or in addition to the warrant on a one pager, as Jeff said. So I'm good with that. As far as the revolving funds go, Don, I got to tell you, I've been on the same page with you for six years, maybe seven yep. years yep. on it. Yep. But two years ago, you and Dana DaCosta offered to dive into this and come back to the board with a comprehensive report on the revolving funds, and it was crickets. As far as the revolving funds go and, and FOIA requests and everything else, we get audited every year. Mm -hmm. 
we, we, the same processes for expenditures, which we all heard on Sunday again, Saturday again, the same process for revolving funds and passing through the finance department is like any and all other bills. Do we need to do some work on it? Total respect to Don, he, this is something that he's asked for for six years. I say yes, but <coughs> there's nothing going on with the revolving funds that doesn't comply with law. We wouldn't pass our audits and, and the expenses wouldn't, uh, th those putting in the finance director would not approve those requests. Right. So is there room for improvement? Sure. I, I, would, I would suggest that the select board, uh, uh, Julie, you said a policy on what goes into the warrant and what information is provided. Mm -hmm. Might be a good idea for you all to think about that. Mm -hmm. There are a number of select board policies. Where is there a policy on what should be in the warrant? I understand we have a professional town administrator who's doing all this stuff, but is there, but again, there are no receipts in the warrant for the past several years. So should you, I, I would strongly urge you to sometime this summer, because now isn't the time to do it, mm -hmm. but sometime this summer, have a discussion. What should be in the warrant mm -hmm. for information for the public? And I'm okay, Michael, with the not putting it in a bylaw, if that's the decision. But again, this was our proposal. Thank you, Mayor. All right, Don. And I don't think that anybody's trying to hide anything. Thank you. Let me just say that. Hello. <laughs> Can I say something? Um, Michael's correct. However, I might point out that uh, that was before Mr. DeCosta bought a Winnebago and headed out of town. And we had a previous finance director. And in fairness, I believe that Kathleen and you and I had a conversation down in the lobby about late November. I said, you're buried. There's no reason for me to sit with you. But I wanted to sit with you about revolving funds. Got it. But I'm just saying that this isn't about what's legal and illegal. This is about whether the public decides that they want to spend their money that way. Because that's... It's, we're, it's not our money. I mean, whether it's fees or it's taxes, it's, it's house money. It's somebody else's money. I definitely never thought it was my money, <laughs> just to be clear. I just want to make Sin. it really clear that at no time have I suggested that there's anything illegal going on. Right. No. no. However, we don't know whether some of those expenditures would be more appropriate for an appropriation by town meeting instead of running through a revolving fund. We have really no idea as a community what the activity is inside those funds, and I think it would be helpful to know that. That's what Data and I were supposed well, to do. I think that, you know, back to the point of, you know, we, we have financial audits, we have Understood. our finance director, we have, you know, our we have treasurer, collector, I mean, everybody's dotting the I's and crossing the T's to an exorbitant amount of paperwork. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to go back and say, and again, I know you're not saying that anyone's hiding anything, but to me it's like another layer of more people checking when you're, so it does, it does assume something, even if you don't mean it to assume something, right? It sounds like, okay, well, you know, this department needs to be triple checked. And I mean, we hire professionals for a reason, and certainly I hear you on you know the budget and the backup documents, and I and that's why I think it's better. You know, you might get a you might get a different board that wants to put in millions of things and sure. build a bigger warrant. So you know, codifying it in a bylaw just doesn't make sense to me. So I think it is a larger discussion. I also think that we should look at other towns. You know, we may be putting in more than other towns, or we may be putting in less. So let's look at that too. Not that we have to do it the way another town does it, but we could look for references. What does this town include? You know, are we doing that? And maybe, you know, in some respects, we might be giving more in certain areas and not the other information you'd like to see. I'm open to the discussion. I just don't see it going in a bylaw. That's my opinion. And I'm sorry, go ahead. Please. I was just going to say that being a CPA and having done audits, I have a pretty good idea of what is looked at, the sampling that is done. An auditor, somebody coming in and auditing books and records is not looking at every single no. transaction. Agreed. So just so that the public understands that, yes, we have an audit here, 
but there is statistical sampling that happens and someone, they go through and they say, okay, I'm gonna look at 50 items. And as long as they're all supported by documentation, they say, okay, that sampling says probably okay. Statist the sampling that is done in the CPA world, if there are 50 items picked and five have problems, you expand the sample. Right. But in no way is an audit ever looking at every single piece of paper unless you are undergoing a specific forensic fraud audit. Totally understand. But so I, I just want to say that for the public. Some auditing yeah. too, so I get it. I, and you're right. It depends on what the sampling when you pull it and what you're finding. You know. So. But we're I not going to do it for this meeting. No. So. Yeah. Let me just say one thing. I'm going to. I'm going to backpedal as fast as I can on the transparency <laughs> position I took because I don't believe there's one person in in this operation who is looking to be not transparent. I'll use the word information. Mm -hmm. And I'm a fan of information. And I don't care if it's a bylaw or if it's a policy. Mm -hmm. I'm open to the conversation and I'm happy to have it and I'm happy to vote on it. But I'm a fan of information. And, and, and I think the public, regardless of how thick it is, one more page isn't gonna make a big difference. I just would like to get it in there somehow. And if, a by, if it's not the pleasure of the board to have a bylaw change, then let's, let's have a bigger discussion on how to get it in there. So. Fine, exactly. thank you. We have, that when we have the time to have it, though. Well, that's what he's saying. That's what yeah. I said. So, well, we can do it in, we the, can in vote the summer. On it now. Right. Yeah. But, but we're going to vote on this now, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yes. Right, so that's, we give them direction. So we give them direction. Right. I move that the following general bylaw change be included. Well, we already did this and we had a second. You right? did. So right. what we have to do is vote. Okay. Now we have to vote. Okay. All in favor? Zero four. I move that the following. I move that the following general bylaw change be included in the May 2024 annual meeting town warrant. Chapter 7, uh, chapter 271-3, during legislative session of town meeting, the floor shall be occupied solely by registered voters. <coughs> it shall be the duty of the moderator to clear the floor of all non-voters. Non-voters shall be allowed to address the meeting at the discretion of the moderator. The moderator shall allow non-resident department head to speak on any article uh, the subject matter of which might affect that department or in response to a question from the floor. Let me say one thing before mm -hmm. we, so Linda and I worked on this. Linda tidied it up a little bit, but I expanded back on to what you all did in the first place because I think there could be a, a, a good discussion. I wanted Don, Michael, and Julie to have the opportunity to discuss what you all had put forward in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I'll so second that, your yeah. discussion. Thank you. Okay, moved and seconded. Um, Don, did you? I, I think it's nice to actually address this. I mean, uh, is Michael Mott be here forever himself? I mean, it would be nice to have a context for whoever it is the moderator is in five or ten years. It's, uh, this is, these are guardrails, and it seems perfectly reasonable. And we keep going through this. I mean, I, I, I have a word in mind, but I can't say it because everybody's going to get mad at me. Not here, but out there on TV land. Um, it's just disappointing to have this discussion over and over. It's like, well, no, we're not going to let them talk. No, and it's like, no, so come on. Yeah. What does it hurt anybody to have somebody opine just because they live across the line in Brewster? Uh, but to actually clarify how this works in writing is, is fine with me. I think we also, Jeff and I had talked about where it says uh, both the current section and the proposed rewording both say non-resident department head, mm -hmm. and it would seem to just say non-resident. So meaning don't get rid of department head and just say? Well, just to expand it, because this right now says non-resident, but just to clarify that a, a, a non-resident, any non-resident could speak at the discretion of the moderator. So yeah, what? Without Sorry. the vote. I have a different opinion on that. Okay. Uh, I am, as, as we talked about earlier, Michael might not be there forever. He's leaving you. He's leaving. Right? <laughs> He's leaving you as we speak. <laughs> Wait, is that, you adjourning yourself again? He's had it. Okay, so my, uh, I feel that it would be a great idea to allow non-resident department heads mm -hmm. to be able to speak mm -hmm. when it's appropriate and germane. By right. By right. Yes. I don't think a moderator or the public 
should have an opportunity to silence Dr. Carpenter, for example. On the other hand, Almost happened, though. on the other hand, I feel that it should remain with the voters on the floor to determine whether or not a non-resident who has nothing other than a non-resident status, not a department head or anything to, to, to support our, our, our town's uh, infrastructure, I don't think that should be a moderator's decision. I think that should stick with the voters. So you're going back on what we just talked about on Friday. Have you rethought this? No. That's where I've always stood. Ah. That's where I've always stood. We didn't talk about that. We so, didn't okay. get this far with it. But I th what, what you and I discussed was the moderator um, allowing a, a department head to speak, resident or non-resident. I think that that should happen. But I think it's up to the voters, and I think it should be, I think it should remain in the voters' hands if a non-resident wants to talk about our school system or a non-resident wants to talk about our open space. I don't, I don't think that's, that should be a moderator's decision, whether it be this moderator or any future moderators. That's my position. Michael? I, I, oh, I, yeah, sorry. I think Linda was going to say, were you going to respond to Jeff? Or? No, I was just going to say, if that's true, then we wouldn't change the language, the current language at all. Okay, thank you. Michael. And the one that stands out is Dr. Carpenter when he got up to speak about the um, petition article and, and basically the floor said no. Uh, and so I do think we have to clarify and let the moderator make the decision on department heads as it, as it relates to the department for the town. I think that makes perfect sense. And we should be allowing that. So a lot of our department heads aren't here. But if it affects conservation, Amy should be able to speak. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. floor shouldn't say no because she lives in another town. Right. right. To Jeff's point on anybody and having it be the moderator, we had two instances last year, and, and it's funny. So one of the documents I got tonight, oh yeah, and the rationale was about the length of town meeting. Mm. We spend eighty million dollars in fifteen minutes, right? And then we will go on on four minutes, okay? And then we <laughs> and then we will go on a petition article for an hour and a half, <coughs> or two hours. And we mm -hmm. had one instance this year where somebody from Brewster one of the quote unquote experts in plastic and um, somebody somebody that may have worked in our school system but was fighting against the plastic ban. So if we really do care about the length of town meeting, we really should do the hourglass and the five minutes to speak and we definitely mm -hmm. shouldn't be letting people from other towns that are part of organizations speak on banning silverware, mm -hmm. plastic silverware. So when I look at this, though, I agree. So I don't think non-residents should be speaking on items that we're discussing at our town meeting. I do, I do think that department heads should certainly be allowed to speak. They should. We pay them to speak. So I guess when I look at this, though, I, I'm trying to look at it in a different way to simplify it in the sense that the moderator doesn't even have to be involved. They should, by right, have the ability to do that. Mm, right? So, like, the moderator shouldn't even have to make a decision on allowing a department head to speak. If summoned, they should be able to speak. So I'm going at it in a different way to sort of simplify it to even take that out and, and, or, or codify it. And, no, no, I don't, I don't mean take it out. I mean codify it and codify it in some other way that, you know, department heads should be able to speak. It doesn't matter that they're not town residents. So, so this, I understand what we're doing here, and I appreciate it, and I think it's a good idea, but I'm wondering if we can simplify it even more to say automatically department heads are allowed to speak. doesn't matter what town they're from as long as they're working for the town of Harwich. Don? In support of what you just said, it doesn't say that right now, and we don't have time. So I think they understand where we're coming from, and we could vote on it, and it's got to change anyway. To, to reflect what yeah, Jeff has some said, other, yeah. and the timing. So, go ahead. Thank Jeff. you, We'd all like to do it by right. Yeah, of course. And I, to your point, well done, because that's a totally different way of looking at it. But I, I believe that the beginning of it, mm -hmm. the the first sentence during the legislative session, mm -hmm. that needs to stand. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I am in in support of exactly what you just said. Is the department head should be able to speak? And non-voters shouldn't. Yeah. So unless we let them. Unless the unless the voters let them. Yep. Right. 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 So, so we have a motion. 
uh, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. The only thing I was going to say is that it's the moderator's meeting. Okay, so we have to leave it in that. I I, I personally would leave it in there. Okay. Because it is it does once mm -hmm. you know with mm -hmm. respect to the select board once you get done with. Your, it then does become the moderator's meeting. Okay. It is his meeting, and it is what is, it's his way of running it. So leave it. In, so I would leave it, it in there like that. Okay. I, I was just trying to simplify. No, it, no, but. I more than understand. But out of respect for the position mm -hmm. that the moderator has, I think I would just leave it. Okay. I would leave it. So I have to ask. Leave leave it the way it sits right now. Leave it the way we've written it. The way you've written it. Yeah. Right. Understood. With the revision. With, right. Right. So you so, so leaving it the way we've written it, but leading in the major the cons majority consent of the voters for all but department heads. Right, right. Yeah. Well, it, I think what we're proposing is uh, duty of the moderator to call you for non-voters shall be <coughs> allowed to address the meeting at the discretion of the moderator. We crossed out without majority consent, without a vote of town meeting, provided that the moderator shall allow a non-resident department head to speak on any article, blah, blah, blah. So you you want to, I'm, I'm not sure Please. I understand. No, no, go ahead, uh, add back in. Are your, so you the want vote. to keep the vote of town meeting floor. The vote of town meeting floor. That would be what I would suggest. And then which, which the last, when we did this, I mean, unfortunately, Dr. Carpenter it, that was an unfortunate incident. But town meeting floor said no, yeah. and they were overridden. Right. So. That's where your language of department head or direct is, I believe, needs by right, to, yeah. by right needs right. to be in there. But non-voters, and I think so too. Non-voters at the discretion of the voters. So you want it of the voters. Would okay. Be my, well, my, but to, but which basically language. you're leaving it unchanged from what is in the current charter. Oh. That will make I mean, sorry, bylaw. You, so, you, so just to be clear, we would leave that language and then we would add that. the language of the moderator shall allow a non-resident department head to speak. That's correct. That would be the yep. addition, that would right? Be yeah. the and addition. the only thing you're changing is the moderator may allow, you're changing may to shall. shall. That right. is the only change. Right. That's right, so it says, because uh, the current language is just the moderator may allow a non-resident department head to speak. It's blah, blah, blah. Right. It's really changing the word may to shall. That's the change. To not put it to a public vote. To, to this is the department head department ones. Department yes. but that's correct. Right, and that's all. That right. would be the change. So you may want to take your, take your motion back can and I that the only me? change is to make made a shall. Sure. Okay. For a bylaw change. <laughs> so Don, he has a follow-up. Thank you, Madam Chair. I rise to speak in favor of what Michael said earlier. I mean, even, even if I was the proponent of the uh, uh, petition article, increasingly we're winding up with a one-size-fits-all and a bunch of people go from town to town to town to town and they all just start taking over the meeting based on the data set that they claim they have. It, like I said, even if it was something I was arguing in favor of, it really is our town meeting, and our town meetings, people should have the right to be able to discuss what they want to do without being told, you don't understand, we've already done this in Brewster, we've already done this in Sandwich, and you better do it here. Okay. So just to clarify, we're just going back to what we just all talked about. The language will stay the same except for your addition about the moderator and you're going to change it to shall allow the shall. department heads. That's the only change. That's, That's the change. change. Yeah, I, right. yeah. Yeah. But Michael, I've That was your motion, wasn't it? Yeah, if I, if I may, I, uh, to Anita's point, uh, we should respect the position. We should clean this up and show it to Michael Ford. Yes. And say, Are you okay with mm -hmm. this? Right. Sure. Good idea. Definitely. Well, we should show him all of these anyway. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Definitely the one that affects him. Right. Right. Well, I don't want to withdraw the motion entirely then because I can withdraw the second. Yeah, withdraw the second. I'll withdraw it. And I'll withdraw my motion. And I move that the following general bylaw change be included in the May 2024 annual meeting town warrant chapter 20, chapter 271-3. During the legislative session of town meeting, the floor shall be occupied solely by registered voters. 
and it shall be the duty of the moderator to clear the floor of all non-voters. Non-voters shall not address the meeting without majority consent thereof, provided, however, that the moderator shall allow a non-resident department head to speak on any article, the subject matter of which might affect the department or in response to a question from the floor. And, and to further to send the motion, send that to, to refer moderator. it to the moderator. And we will send this motion, if carried, to the moderator for approval. For review. For review. And approval. I'll, I'll second it. So moved and seconded. Any further discussion? I'll second it. Don seconded. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So 4 0. And then this is hold for future discussion. Yeah, I don't think we really need to go over these, but I just wanted to put them down for us to see. And in the interest of time, we can mm -hmm. just bring these up at a later meeting if that's okay with the committee. Can I bring one thing okay. up from here? Yeah, go ahead, John. Please don't trap us. Because other towns have changed their charters to specify a finance meeting in May and a regular uh, yeah, no, right. zoning meeting. It, right now, we call it as a special as needed. Everything's supposed to be done in May. And if we start changing around with and diddling that, we are going to be obligated to hold a fall town meeting even if we don't have anything to talk about. So I'm not really hugely in favor of calling two town meetings unless we need two town meetings. Sure. And if I make before we close, oh, sorry, go ahead, Lynn. Before we close, there is another topic to discuss, which is uh, thank you, Joe, for the, the memo on that there are five sections of the charter a couple of years ago we changed the name the title board of selectmen to select board however the article did not say and it said in the article where it says board of selectmen it should say select board there are places within the charter there are five of them that say select men well, the article did not state and change select men to select board member so if we want to clean that up, they've been unable to make those five, and I looked at them, they're all, they all say, one says Office of the Selectman, the other four say Selectman. I think I'm right on that, Joe. So I'm going to ask that this get cleaned up. Plus, the bylaws were never changed. Through the bylaws, it says still says Board of Selectmen. That article that was written, I believe, by town council completely omitted the bylaw reference. So now they have a, we have a charter that says select board, and we have a set of bylaws that say board of selectmen. So I don't think it would be that hard to write that for this town meeting, because it's a housekeeping. One's a housekeeping issue on the charter for those five sections, and they're clearly identified, and also make the change that is needed in the bylaws. I think when the, the article was not put forth as a bylaw change, I don't it believe. It was a charter change, but it wasn't followed by a companion bylaw change. Don? Thank you, Madam Chair. I am mean, you know, so disappointed because we were promised by legal counsel there was software. Everybody's done this before. All we do is just throw all this language in, and it'll automatically convert it to gender neutral language wherever it appeared. I mean, that was the intent of doing the, changing the name. It, it, and we were actually going to actually start saying, it appears here, 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 here. He said, don't worry about it. There's software that converts it. And then we have a vendor that we send these things to, and they vet it with their software. So I'm, I'm like, disappointed that we've got five dangling references that Aren't still have a, a gender specified when we didn't want to do it that way. So I'm... And, I, and apparently, I guess, the, and the town clerk, according to this, has gone to town council. Yes, these are correct. They were missed in the original mm -hmm. article, which means that if you put it in as an article to change these five little sections in the charter, then it has to go on the ballot next year. So it's another two years before this foolishness gets done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, the bylaws, though, can be changed immediately once town meeting would make a vote. I, I, I strongly urge you to clean this up because it, it's, <coughs> it's messy. Yeah. It's untidy. Right. It's icky. It's icky. <laughs> and it's unprofessional. Mm -hmm. 
Spell that with an EY or an uh, IE. Quickly. Yeah. Uh, I'll ask town administrator, are there two citizens petitions that, that should be going to this committee shortly? That I, I'm not sure if there are or there aren't, but I'm asking. I, I believe there's at least one that makes reference to governance. Um, the documentation is presently available. However, we're working with council with articles that would be placed to make sure that the petitioners are comfortable with that language. Okay, so a reasonable amount of time for them to expect that should um, be? If they wanted to work off of the petition information that we have right now, I can certainly send that. Again, council's going through the effort as they do every year of creating the language to try to match petitioners. So it's whichever sure. you prefer. Well, I'd turn that over to you, Madam Chair, and let you decide. Well, as long as we all know that, you know, they're working on it and some language could change depending on how the petitioners feel about council's recommendations. I don't think the rest of the board have any problem sending them over. Is that okay with you guys? And, uh, and actually, town council may make some suggestion, but if the petitioners don't want to change it, that's, that's they what don't I'm get to change it. That's what I, that's what yeah. I said. If the petitioner accepts town council's recommendations, then there'll be changes. But if they want to leave it the way it is, then it'll be the way we send it over to you. But just knowing that, you know, Go back to, we've got to make sure you check before anything more, so. So can that can be I, sent over this week then? So it can I, something to do like right We have away. a meeting next week, so may I agenda review of bylaws, potential bylaws, whether they be by petition or by board, that I can put that on our agenda for next yeah, week, I, which I have to file Thursday morning. I can do that, that's okay? I take my directive from the board. I don't think that's a My problem. understanding of the various votes you took tonight, articles will have to be created. I know we have language there, but mm -hmm. they're not presently in article form. Well, and also the, of the petition articles, there are bylaw petition articles that should be sent to us. But also, didn't we just, we, we also owe you the answer on the five um, bylaw. Yes. Thing. We owe you that answer. So before we go to the next one, let's give an answer on that. Perfect. I'm just suggesting that we send whatever we can, like right now. Uh, if there's one petition article that's ready to go. No, I'm not talking about the petition articles, though. I'm talking about the five that Linda has made clear that, you know, we, ha we have a the disconnect there, so. I, I would look to the town administrator if we can get it done, then yeah. I certainly would support that. I think what I believe the bylaw charter review committee was making reference to is your new business item E. Oh, sorry. Is that correct? Oh, is that, is that what item E is? The Today? Five, uh, five items noticed by the codifier and the clerk. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah and it, it just said discussion on need for charter article. That was this? Correct. Ah, okay. okay thank right. you. No, well, then we'll talk about that when, when we get there. It cool. was not clear to me. Tell the Uber to so wait. So that's clearing up the five items. Okay. Uh, and then we'll send the petition articles over with the understanding that they may change depending on what the <coughs> petitioners feel. Okay. Um, and that's it. And then you want to... Close your meeting. Yeah. We good? Set. Uh, motion to close our. So moved. Seven. <laughs> second. second. All's in favor? Aye. So, uh, 729. And anybody who votes no can stay here. Anybody who votes no can stay here. Yes. Thank you very much. I, I, Thank we you. really appreciate the opportunity <coughs> together mm -hmm. to move things through and get stuff done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your work. Um, <coughs> new business. Okay. Yeah. I move that we approve the appointment of Andrea Ackridge as the in interim treasurer collector per Mass General Law, Chapter 41, Section 40. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? No. Oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah. if I could. Um, first, this is going to tie oh, to right. a contract. Mm -hmm that I'll be announcing under town administrator's report. This was mentioned during your budget workshop at the finance committee. Mm -hmm. And I would just ask if you're willing to correct my Scrivener's error by having the motion referred to a temporary treasurer collector, because that's the language in the statute. That was my second. I believe my motion mentioned temporary instead of interim. And then specifically, if you could indicate effective immediately. Effective, uh, I move that we approve the appointment of Andrea Ackridge as the temporary treasurer collector per Mass General Law, Chapter 41, Section 40, effective immediately. Second still. 
Okay, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. B? I move that we accept and place the following articles in the 2024 annual town meeting warrant. Town offices and committees, reports, reports of officers and committees, elected officials' salaries, lease purchase agreements, defray library expenses, promote the town of Harwich, herring fisheries. Can you hold off on the last one? Thank you. Can you just did? I'll second. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Any discussion on any of those articles? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. Want to make a motion on this one now? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. 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 Move that we vote to accept and place the following article in the 2024 annual town meeting warrant. Water Infrastructure Investment Fund, also known as WIF. I'll second only for discussion. Moved and seconded. Don? Yeah, I mean, uh, any way you cut this is going to be either a tax uh, rise or it's going to take something out of a pool or CPC. Now, I, I get that we paid off the debt for the land bank, and that's all well and good, but we haven't had that discussion, and I feel really uncomfortable putting an article in where we haven't identified the funding source for it, and there's been zero public discussion about how we're going to fund that article. Michael? Oh. I apologize. Yeah. Um, the act that you just took under item B, um, I will refer to the memo that's in the packet that informs yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, I'd asked in the memo if you could hold off completely on the discussion on the whip. Good. Thank you. Okay. Did you second that? I, I sure did, and I will remove my second. And I will remove my motion. All right, so we'll. I, and if we, and just because it's in the packet, Joe, I know you were going to make some calls on that. Mm -hmm. It's probably premature to think that we're there. So if I may, beyond the, um, well, I can update. Um, to the questions that were brought up before, the answer is yes. The language that was earlier offered has to be done all at once. Mm -hmm. So you would have to and imagine a funding source, so to speak. Um, the question that was that has arisen is that within that statute, it then requires the vote of the town. And I believe if you were to add this to the warrant for May, it requires a ballot question to go in November. Right. And I'm not prepared to recommend that yet. I'd like to vet that and get it back to you right. um, as soon as next week, if possible. And we also learned, Julie, if I may, tell you. Sure, go ahead. We also learned that uh, on Saturday that there is no harm in waiting one more year on this because they're not going to need the money. So, correct. Due to the lack of education and answers, we might just hold on this until next year. Correct. Absolutely. Thank you, Joe. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, so we will go to um, the update. In the 2024 um, annual town meeting article, excuse me, for Queen Anne Road parcels. <coughs> so the update would be that, as, as you may know, there's uh, several steps that are taking place in anticipation of the articles. So you have, um, as was previously mentioned, you have the action of real estate and open space asking that these uh, three parcels, as identify, um, eventually be voted at the annual town meeting to be conveyed. In the meantime, they must be declared as surplus property, so I've directed staff and we're actively reaching out as required under 30B to various boards, committees, and departments, and we're collecting what we expect to be a series of no, we don't need it. Uh, and then the board um, could either, um, I think we're targeting March 25th for you to declare those parcels as surplus, but you will have the articles themselves next week. So. Um, the articles could be placed once they're written. Um, council has written them, I just haven't reviewed them yet. Um, and then ahead of town meeting, you will actively vote, I presume, to declare them surplus. And that's the last thing you need to do before town meeting takes action. Thank you, Joe. It's great news. Um, so there's our discussion on that. Discussion on uh, community preservation committee articles for 2024 annual town meeting. So as you may recall, I had um, thought that they would be available this evening, um, working with the Community Preservation Committee. They had some um, language corrections, so rather than rush it, that'll come before you next week as well. Great, thank you. And then of course, you've heard about um, item E um, on the need for a charter article. 
Um, at the time that we were going to press on the agenda, we didn't know the specifics. Mm -hmm. So you can see the memorandum uh, that I've put in the packet. And again, as was articulated during your joint meeting, there were um, uh, five specific sections of charter, they being uh, Chapter 3, Section 1, Clause 2, Chapter 4, Section 4, Clause 2, Chapter 8, Section 1, Clause 1, Chapter 9, Section 2, Clause 4, and Chapter 9, Section 3, Clause 3. Um, a fairly straightforward article, but in fact does need to be <coughs> corrected by town meeting action and then uh, by the voters, presumably in uh, April of 20, excuse me, May of 2025. Okay. All right. So um, if I could specifically, however, it was if the board has um, no objection or if you want to do specifically direct the creation of those, I'll do that. I can certainly do that by consensus from the board as well. Just whatever um, you prefer. Are all board members in favor of doing that? Yeah. Four zero. I know it wasn't a vote. I'm just letting you know. And I'll just indicate favor. consensus. Thank you. Um, and then we have uh, approved uh, revised use facility form as recommended by the Director of Recreation and Eric is ill, so he's not here this evening. Um, and so, Joe, I'll, I mean, we can all just talk about the form. I didn't see an issue with Eric's form. Does anyone have any comments on? Um, if I may, Madam Chair, sure, sure, just ahead. on behalf of our rec yep. director, um, who again would have been in attendance um, if not for um, an illness related to a party, um, and we were speedy recovery for sure. Uh, what I would want to draw to your attention is, so you see the use of facility form, which has been um, updated to reflect um, nonprofit uh, use only. The second document, which I think is can be given out as a standalone, also tends to be the back page of the form. Mm -hmm. um, if you see item number two under the rules for use of ball fields and parks, um, there had been language in prior versions that talked about an exemption that the Rec and Youth Commission and Department could make to allow for-profit. There's nothing that suggests that. Um, so I recommended the removal of that. And then further, I believe you have in your packet, um, first the current, excuse me, the existing uh, Board of Selectmen policy, so-called, going back to 2001 on townwide facilities use policy, as well, uh, uh, and as a policy that goes back to adoption on March 26, 20. Uh, 2001, and then you have a uh, Town of Harwich general fee waiver policy for nonprofit organizations, and that was adopted August 9, 2010. And I included those because you already have your own policies in place, and in reading these, we don't see anything that allows for profit. Right. So I could suggest that that question answers itself. Um, so just want to put that out there for your record. Yeah, and now um, just not not to combine even more, but to say that this also ties into the revised form I gave you, um, the revised general fee waiver policy that I was putting to, to the rest of you to take a look and see what you think about that because um, I think it helps take the waiver issue of nonprofits off the table if we say that nonprofits don't have to pay a user fee. So that would mean that automatically, if they were looking for a waiver, it would be for a license or a, a permit fee. Can we put that in the packet though so the public can see it? Oh, yeah. yeah. I will. This will come back. Okay. I just right. figured we could talk about it no, now no. with the revision and then bring it back. Fine. Yeah. But, um, let me know if you have any comments on the way. So in other words, I, the, the current general fee waiver policy for the public for nonprofit organizations, the only change is in two spots. It shall be the general policy of the town of Howard to reduce or waive a license or permit or um, fee if there exists a need that is clearly defined and documented by a nonprofit organization and such reduction or waiver is in the best interest of the town. So. Do we get rid of, I mean, actually, I thought it, you know what, I missed it on this one, so I'm sorry if I've caused more confusion. Um, we have a license or permit fee and get rid of the user. 
Mm. And then, sorry, because I had mm -hmm. done that on an earlier version. Um, and then add nonprofit or just for clarification, add nonprofit organizations will not be charged a user fee for use of any town owned property. Just so it's clear that it wasn't omitted. Is is any of that so it's not in your on, packet. No, no, I, I get that. That's what you gave me. But related to uh, the request to approve the new facility form is what what you're talking about now relevant in any way yes on that? because we because Eric omitted um, the section that it talked about waivers because it's not necessary if it's only for nonprofits then you wouldn't need the section that talked about you can you can apply oh, for a waiver right. that just would add more confusion more if you yeah. left it on there so is the draft fee waiver policy uh, what is that what this is yes okay and just just to clarify in that first sentence yeah it should say you know general policy of the town of Howard to reduce or waive a license or permit fee get rid of user mm -hmm. if there exists a need that is clearly defined blah 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 mm -hmm. and then I was just saying and maybe it's redundant but to make it clear that we didn't miss something, because who knows, 20 years from now, if this still stands, somebody might say, well, maybe they just missed user. No, I'm saying mm -hmm. it's clearly down here, nonprofit organizations will not be charged a user fee for use of any town-owned property. Mm -hmm. And then the only other place it changes are down here. The reduction of a waiver or of a license or permit and get rid of user again. That's for every? Nonprofits. Yeah, but still, there's implications here for the community center. <laughs> well, yeah. Thank so, you. Uh, I certainly have not seen the. Uh, my name is Carolyn <laughs> Keir. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I have not seen the document, but no, the community center does charge every group and organization, and we have all nonprofit groups and organizations utilizing the building. We charge, not we, yeah. the town mm -hmm. charge, not me. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, nothing to see here. I got no money going <laughs> in my pockets here. So we charge every group and organization, with the exception of a town, the recreation department, the council on aging, they do not pay, but. So this, well, I'm glad we're talking about it, because yeah. this came out of a conversation about waivers, right, and how they, do you ever waive a fee? I never, if I need a fee waived, I've come before you exactly twice to ask for it. So. You, you in, alike would, on that. So I would never waive someone's fee. I don't have the authority. I would go through yeah. the town administrator through you, so. No, and I understand that because okay. that's, that's what got us here, <laughs> okay. this conversation. But so. if you do change that, it would certainly impact the amount of revenue I bring in for renting the community center. Okay. We currently have about 152 groups utilizing the building and they're all paying. Mm -hmm. So, that's so, so that's approximate. I just did in my head. <laughs> so, so this goes back to, cause I, I was saying the same thing about what are the impacts of the waiving of the fees? Yeah. This is why we're having this conversation. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Go. I'd say you're dismissed, but I don't have that authority. <laughs> um, couple, a couple things here. Uh, there's a similar situation going on in the, uh, the cultural center, and I can prove it because I'm $100 lighter than I was last year when we asked for a 501c3 use of the field in front of it. They don't waive anything either, and we didn't. So that's first off. I it was only 50. I think you're exactly No, it was 100. I mean, I can tell you exactly what denominations the bills were. Uh, in any event, there's also uh, two things that are headlines here that I don't want to miss. Uh, first of all, this policy, I mean, this, this fellow Howell was part of the original one, uh, it has to be revisited because there's no school department. Yeah, uh, and, that, and in addition to that, I know because I was there, it was never the intention for anybody to view this as ownership. So, like, the town administrator doesn't own town hall. 
uh, or Sisson Road or Albro House. But likewise, the Rec and Youth Department doesn't own uh, Brooks Park. It, that's a discussion we have to have because I know one of their members gave me something that he thought was supporting that they were that was theirs and had always been theirs because it said for recreational and or uh, open space purposes. But it was conveyed in town meeting in, I think it was 1903, and it was later brought forward on eminent domain to clear it because apparently there were some title problems. Uh, Things never change. Uh, you were a board uh, member then too, weren't you? In 1903, in yeah. yeah, as a matter, yeah. I've I've been here forever. Um, but the 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 point is they they neither own it uh, by inference because this form exists. It was conveyed to them to get have authority to exercise over it by us. Number one, and number two, um, in reading those documents, there's no way other to read them than that. They were handed over for general municipal purposes, particularly parks and open space, but it never was actually encumbered like you normally would for a gift that was given to the town for the purpose of recreation in the parks department. It, it, it didn't read like that. No, but, ba but back to your other point about the fact that, this, so this memo. It's gotta, be, it's gotta be changed for a couple of reasons, and it's gotta be made clear that just because we are delegating yeah, a jurisdiction got, doesn't mean that we're telling them, you now own this area. But no, but to your point, this Brooks Park is under rec and use, so that needs clarification. The school department, obviously, clarification there about what schools at this point, because it's different. Yeah. And 204 doesn't appear on here. Right. So, and obviously it wouldn't, it's 2001, so this needs to be revised. And yet I love it, the old recreation building is conveyed um. to the authority of the town administration. Mm. So this needs to be looked As at. As if that's the title. And then the fee waiver. So back to Carolyn's point, so you know, we talked about, and Carolyn, our discussion on fee waivers really came out of discussions with REC and, and, and all of that. So, you know, maybe it gets revised further to be recreation, you know, nonprofits that are using recreation facility. I don't know how we would really subdivide that, but anyway. Just, just to finish the thought, I don't know that any other members have heard this, but I have heard from numerous sources there have been discussions about a for profit approaching the town, I suppose that's the Rec uh, Youth Commission for Brooks Park for this use in on uh, two levels, not just the who's got the jurisdiction level, but the uh, original policy where the town minister is right, doesn't say anything at all about for-profits. It's always been uh, for non not for profits. And just want to send a message that hold on. <laughs> That's G, I think, right? That's our next item. Yeah, again, just hold sure, on. Everything should just hold on because uh, we never intended this to, to bleed out into mm -hmm. you know, oh. various organizations just running on their own. But so to Michael's earlier point about how does this play in, so mm -hmm. F and G, they are separate, but they are intertwined, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then really there's a C <laughs> to be, well, I guess a G2. G2. <laughs> there's the memo. There's this memo from yeah. 2001 that needs to be revised, too. So, Boy, so we just made a lot of work for I know. Ourselves. So there's three different things that play in here. And then the other question of if we're looking to try to address the, because to Carolyn's point, she doesn't waive fees very often, be a, a different circumstance, but with REC and with that conversation. So I guess. The question is, let's look at these documents and figure out at least revising them, right? And decide, do we want to waive the fees or not? For, and do we want to make it specific to rec? I don't know, but I'm just trying to get somewhere on that discussion. Michael? Uh, we all know how I feel about fees. <laughs> no, tell us. So, <laughs> so I'm absolutely not a fan and couldn't support the change in the policy on fee waivers. A, I think all fee waivers should be done, as Carolyn pointed out, she's done too, should be done by the local licensing authority, and it's, it really is not a lot. But I have watched Rec and Youth over the years and what they approve for fee waivers, and I think it, it really warrants a larger discussion. There's a cost to using all of this stuff. You mentioned nonprofits. Some of the most <coughs> profitable businesses are nonprofits. There's so much staff involved. There's so much payment involved, and I, I don't... 
I see this in every other walk of life. They pay their fees. And there's no reason at all that anyone could justify to me without coming before us and pleading their case on why they need the fee adjustment. That we should just blanketly be saying, if you're a nonprofit, use our fields, use whatever you want for free, we're not going to charge you. So it's just a so so follow up on that, just to share, is that um, I did call and speak with Chatham, and Chatham doesn't uh, charge nonprofits, I believe. Yarmouth and Dennis, but I'd have to confirm that, um, that they don't charge a user fee for nonprofits or um, I think residents in Chatham, but I'll follow up on that. Clearly we've had some great success in renting 152 programs and everyone paying. And, I, and, and, <laughs> and, in, and in a lot of cases, when people come before us, except for the one that Don um, had to pay, you, you made me pay the yeah. second. <laughs> we generally don't vote um, unanimously, at least, to waive those fees. So as I, sure. I, I think we should be leaving this policy alone. The, the bigger thing that I see is the, the use policy only to nonprofits. Don, do you know if the Cape Verdean Festival is its 501c3? They are? Hmm. Well, I know the other huge one that's at town uh, up there, Pugfest, is not a 501c3. Yeah, it is. Family yeah. Pantry. Okay, so they donate every year to the family pantry and okay. yes, no sir. Lamar is a I don't, want to preclude, I don't want to preclude local events, but the craft fair one, I think this board needs to send a message to through the town administrator <coughs> to the rec department because that's come up with several residents. And if they're voting on those dates now, that's unfair to the vendor, it's unfair to the town, and it's a violation of our use policy. Not to mention our own charitables like the Cranberry Festival. The, the system that's in place on fee waivers, uh, other than the fact that REC is just doing their own and they're not supposed to be, and I think that we've already um, brought that out, the, the, the system that's in place works. Right. Well, yeah, I'm there's sorry. confusion on that, though, because, sorry, go ahead. Well, with regard to the <coughs> perspective, uh, perspective use of Brooks Park, um, after I met with the REC director, we went over the form and the incorrect language that was there. He's already conveyed to that group that the town will not be looking for that. Um, that application to come forward because it's not eligible. Um, some have asked before, though, how are how is it that there are some profit enterprises that are allowed to operate in the town? And the short answer is everything you've talked about with regard to fees ties back to departments and programs. We build all of that um, guided by um, Emerson College, the City of Boston. Um, we take all that into consideration. When there are pri uh, uh, profit groups operating, I believe in every instance they're operating under license agreements that the town did through the select board through 30B. So that's a completely different animal. So theoretically, if any private organization or profit organization, excuse me, I got to say it that way, wants to use town uh, town assets, the only way they should be entertained is if the board was looking for that sort of arrangement, and it would be a license agreement. And thank you for that question. Just to follow up on that, though, there, the further confusion with this fee waiver policy, so even if we leave it alone, we do need to clarify it because this whole section says, such a waiver of reduction of a fee will be determined on a case-by-case -case basis by written request mm -hmm. to the particular department, commission, or board, the planning board, board of health, conservation commission, rec and youth commission, waterways commission, library trustees, facilities committee, and Board of Water Commissioners may act to reduce or waive fees under a specific policy adopted by these boards and commissions that is consistent with this general fee waiver policy. So some, whichever way we <laughs> revise it, it needs to be revised at least in that capacity. Is there a general policy on that paragraph that you just wrote? wrote? Are there general policies? In the existing, correct. In this, uh, um, I have not queried the departments or to know if they or related boards have policies. Okay. And this is from 2010. The only, so, oh. Oh. thank you, Madam Chair. The only one that I know that has uh, existing policy is the Board of Health, because they do do things like the VNA clinic. Uh, I mean, so they have a policy about how they're approaching uh, waiving fees, and they have some state authority too to be able to, pr to pull that off, because it's it comes baked in the cake from their Mass General Law. But that's strange. I mean, I, the planning board. <laughs> yeah. Well, where would they come off? 
reducing a fee from anybody. Well, thank you. Yeah, and, and since I've sat here, <coughs> this has been the reoccurrent, mm -hmm. and it's and, and the, it seems like the more this board talks about it, the more confusing it gets. Right. I think we should start at the top with determining. I'm torn by this because I don't want to add more stuff to the select board's agenda, but I think we have to determine who is going to be the only, the mm -hmm. sole arbiter of fee waivers. Right. And th th I don't. I don't know if that's even on the table or something for a bigger discussion, but I, when I read that, it, it se seems to just allow multiple departments. It, that's why we have to make it clear that it doesn't matter who starts with the re, uh, receiving the request. Ultimately, we reserve the right to accept or reject any fee waiver because they're under our jurisdiction, well, all of them. But when you say we reserve the right, that would mean that it actually gets to us. I don't think so. But if there, was, if there was some controversy where they were wa waiving things and it was a massive amount of money, like to Michael's point, some of these things have a fairly hefty sure. uh, use. I mean, uh, senior softball league using the uh, uh, White House field. I mean, they don't just walk on and walk off and nothing happens. I mean, we, uh, there's ground crews. Uh, but you know, they donate to the field. Maybe, but that's part of the overall discussion is like, who has the authority to do that? Okay. Yeah. So Make I think, discussion. but to your point, we have we have like three documents we need to talk about and revise, and and if that's you know update this memo to make it accurate, update this 2001 um, uh, townwide facilities use policy because it's it's all of it's outdated. So we should that'll be another item, <laughs> maybe for the summer. Well, should someone? Sorry, Madam Chair, but would, should someone jump on that and begin cleaning it up? I, I'll still, start I nominate because. Michael. <laughs> I could take a shot at the uh, jurisdiction one. The, uh, All right. That, that, yeah, let's cut it up. 50 and year old That's one. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, take. I don't, don't want to do it. I know you don't. Yeah. That's why I nominated you. I don't you. want it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the meantime, because Julie did mention summer, and I think we probably have enough work for the summer. Um, in the meantime, and, and Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, shouldn't, I guess it's a board decision, not a Joe decision, but shouldn't the board be putting the message out that we're doing all fee waivers? Sounds like we're doing them anyway. I think that's what I was trying to say. I we see. reserve the right to accept and reject all fee waivers. Right. But, but I'm he saying just the departments. Have, sorry, madam. No, no. Go ahead. Well, I was saying the departments have to know to bring it to us. That's what I'm getting. If they're doing it at, at their meetings and we never hear of it. Totally agree. But but that goes back to this. I, well, right? I understand. So so the other thing about it that we need to be cognizant of is the fact that in doing that, and if we choose to do that that we're making, and again, it probably doesn't really go to you, Carolyn, and I don't know who else that I'm trying to think of on a broader, but with REC, when they're coming to REC, that means then if you want, if they want to apply for a fee waiver, that's another meeting that they have to come to, mm -hmm. or another step, even if they don't come, if REC brings it or sends it. Might discourage fee waiver requests. It just, it, well, it adds mm -hmm. to the Yeah, but it gives a context. Frame. If, if we take action, it'll be based on a recommendation from that sure. committee. So. So I will, I will, um, you're going to use, you're going to do the memo from 2001. Yeah, that's, that's pretty easy. But Michael's got a really good point, and ultimately, Jeff, we could take the action, and it doesn't bother me at all that they have to go through somebody because we often do vote on things upon the recommendation of somebody. Understood. Because we don't have time, we don't have time to delve into all to get that. To us. But back to Eric's form. We can approve Eric's form because. <coughs> yeah. I think he did a heck of a job with that. Um, so let's give up that one point for sure is there are no for profits that we're doing this for. So actually, though, when I say let's approve Eric's form, Joe, back to the revision that Eric made on his form, does he need to add the language back in now about the waivers? Because we're not make if we're not going to make that change. Yes, he needs to add that line so. back in. So. Um, on the rules for use of ball fields and parks, the language on waivers read exception. Um, waivers can be granted to for profit. Oh. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in that about exemption, exception being made for not for profit. Okay. Because they were relying on the 2010 policy. So I do think you can adopt the use of facility form and related rules this evening. Okay. 
as presented, and I would recommend the same. All right. We could always unadopt it at a future meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I have both forms. I can't Journey find yourself. Them. No, not yet. Okay. Not yet. I just All want right. to make sure that the message so comes now. out. I'm. What? I just want to make sure that the message comes out that we do actually have that authority, and everybody else is using sure. our authority. I move that we accept the Town of Horwich Recreations Department use of facility form as presented in the packet. Second. Moved and seconded. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Hmm? <laughs> All right. We're we'll past G. We already talked about that as well. Fee waiver. Um, approve the 2024. I'm leaving that to you, Jeff. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that we approve a 2024 annual Class 4 auto repair license renewal for A and G Accident Repair Inc. DBA Cranberry Collision, 161 Queen Anne Road. I also second. Okay. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. You never know how you people want. I, I move, I approve, I move that we approve a special permit application for a one day entertainment and one day wines and malt permit, Sativa, 517 Route 28, event to be held at 517 Route 28 outside in the parking lot, May 25th, 2024, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. with live recorded music with amplification. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. I move that we approve the Harwich Affordable Housing Trust Community Preservation Act grant agreement. Second for discussion. Uh, Michael? My discussion is this is not our, this shouldn't be for us to sign. We don't have anything to do with housing trust. We're, we're not signing it. Joe's signing it. No, so, correct? Um, my understanding on that is it's a community preservation grant. Oh, sorry. To the Affordable Housing Trust and the CPC insists yeah. that the town, you all, sign it and then the trust signs it. Sorry for that miscommunication. Yeah. At the trust meeting that um, Dave Nixon got up and said exactly that. I'm not giving you the money unless you sign this because this is what the state requires us to do. Don? Yeah, I can refer you back to the Declaration of Trust. The trust itself was, it was a document that, it, it, in order to change the document, it would require the trust members and us to agree to that. But having agreed to it, it's filed in the Registry of Deeds. They are a fiduciary. We feed them members. We do not control their activities. They're not part of our, they're not part of the town government in the same way the committees are. They're just not. Uh, they, they can spend money, they can receive gifts, they, uh, they can do all sorts of things. The select board has absolutely no jurisdiction, and I'm not even sure that you, could, that you could pull back the money without a town meeting action. So this thing is kind of wrong in so many directions that uh, I just can't support it. It just doesn't make any sense. There's, it's not supported by law. Well, I can say that having sat at that, which was my, I think, second board meeting, there was... Um, I think Bob, Spencer, and uh, Brendan understood some of the logistics in the sense of why it could be cleaner, but at the same token, um, the chairman of CPC, Dave Nixon, indicated needed to be signed in order to transfer the money. Trust has so. never had us on the board level sign any of this. So if I... Go ahead, Joe. I, Sorry. I, I, if I heard the discussion correctly... Um, the document in front of you with uh, signature <coughs> for the select board has already been signed by the chair of the Affordable Housing Trust. Right. And for whatever reason, they had me sign it as administrator. Mm -hmm. So the Community Preservation Committee is claiming, is arguing, that for the trust to get their money, right. the two parties, the town, or you folks as select board, and the recipient, the trust, have to sign this document. So the opening paragraph says this grant agreement is made by and between the town of Harwich, a municipal corporation acting by and through its select board, and the grantee being the Harwich Affordable Housing Trust. So it's not that the board, select board is being asked to act on behalf of the trust, right. 
On the contrary, you're being asked to act on behalf of the town to, to get enter into this grant agreement. So I would recommend signatures, but if I may, I disagree for a different reason. I read this as essentially the town of Harwich acting through its town meeting, approved an application at, through the Community Preservation Committee, and the select board is now signing an agreement with the town of Harwich acting through the trust. So the town of Harwich is agreeing with an agreement for the town of Harwich. In any event, you're being asked to sign this. The trust has already signed it, okay. not already signed it. Uh, John? Yeah, yeah, I still have to point out <laughs> that the trust every year is obligated to pre present a financial position, a you know, balance sheet, if you will. Uh, that money is never in possession of the, the town uh, under our jurisdiction. It's always in the in affordable housing trust fund. And the only people that can disperse from that are the affordable housing trustees. So if I understand correctly, what CPC is saying is for the trust to even get the money released from the town of Harwich, only the select board can grant the release of those funds by that agreement so that the trust can get those funds and take over their fiduciary. If it's funds. about the release of funds, yeah, but I read That's it the other way around. I read it that, you know, if you don't fulfill the three-year requirement, you're going to have to pay us back, and you sign this. And I don't see that we have any wherewithal to do that. It's not our money. We can't, do, we can't tell them you better give the money back. Well, I'm not trying to hold anything up. I would love to see the language from the state that says that they wouldn't do that. I read it the same way you read it. And I completely disagree with the language, more importantly, in the, the, the grant agreement, right? So if we get beyond this, you have to sign it, even though I don't think I should. If we don't spend the money, if we don't start spending the money in X amount of days, and if we don't spend the money in three years, that goes against what we're trying to do. We're building, it's a fiduciary trust. We want to build some interest money. We want to make sure we do some um, projects that make sense, right? So. What's the guarantee that we're going to spend that $500,000 in three years and not just keep the money until we have a project worth, I, I, mean, I would think that um, CPC and the Housing Trust would feel the same, that, that we should be getting double the money in my opinion, but how do we guarantee that we're going to spend it So in writing? Hold on, let me go to Joe. Joe. So another example that I would use is um, every year the town of Harwich through our many departments are applicants for CPC funds and they're recipients for CPC mm -hmm. funds. So when the chair of CPC and I discussed this several years ago, I told him I would not sign any document that would then go to the select board that says the select board now has this grant agreement with say the recreation department or the cemetery department or any other because the town should not be entering into agreements with itself. These grant agreements as I entered un under the statute that relates to Community Preservation Act are when the town acting through the select board grants funds to non-town agencies and they are the ones that are placed under the burden of give us these updates and if you do not spend the money then we may go after the funds again. But that's separate and distinct from the town going after itself, and I believe Board Member Howell has said it, the Affordable Housing Trust of Harwich is a s political subset, um, or, or is a subset of the political subdivision known as the town of Harwich. Yep. But if it gets them the money, <laughs> Sign on the dotted line. There's one more thing to this. Go ahead, Don. <laughs> it, it, to go a little bit further, because, I mean, I was involved with this for a lot of years. i got to say, the information they're acting off of, and that makes me a little uncomfortable, they are not a government entity, the P, that CPC organization up near Boston. That is close to a pack. It has a board of directors who are actually made up of a constellation of communities that disperse funds and actual stakeholders who provide services to it. If I were looking to see what the state mandates under that law, I'd be looking for a legal uh, opinion 
about what Mass General Law says, not about what they say. Just a thought. Okay, so, so I guess ultimately, back to the question of the legality, right? So can we get some sort of uh, weigh in on whether or not we're required to sign this to put <coughs> the chair of CPC at ease that as to why, we, and I, I know the answer to that because he I was at the meeting and he said if you don't sign this, you're not getting yeah, great, the money. Great, but what's the statutory so, authority for saying that? So. I, that's what I'm asking. I'm just telling you what I know the net result will be. So, um, could, could would the board like me to work on this matter further? Yes, please. It sounds like a great idea. <laughs> I don't want to hold anything up, but at the same token, we need some clarification. Well, and, and I think you know, at some point, maybe a meeting with the CPC. I'd like to get into the mindset a little bit and the understanding of the fiduciary trust and what we're trying to do. And there is no guarantee that we're going to start next amount of days. No. There is no guarantee that we're going to finish the next amount of days. So I think we should it have. shouldn't be. No, but to your point, I think we should have that info legally right. and then have that conversation. And I get that they, are, they see other organizations within the town sitting on Monday money and it doesn't look like anything's happening. It's like, what the hell? You promised us you were going to do this. You haven't even started. And now it's two or three years in. I totally get that. And they have every right to ask that question. But not of a, a fiduciary trust. I don't understand how they're doing that. Well, then I'll wait till you take your second. I remove my second. I remove my motion. And I remove myself. Phenomenal. All right. Progress. So, so we'll bring that back. Okay. Uh, contracts. So. So this one, I would ask that there be a motion to approve. As you know, uh, the town is engaged in the. Um, uh, municipal separate storm sewer system or MS4 general permit. Uh, we work, uh, we have worked with Woodward, uh, excuse me, Wooded and Curran, and we're looking for them to continue to do this work. Um, Wooded and Curran essentially keeps the town in compliance with both the uh, mass DEP requirements on stormwater systems as well as the uh, EPA. I move that we approve a contract with Woodward and Current Inc. in the amount of $93,500 for MS4 stormwater year six permit compliance. Second. Moved and seconded. I seconded that, Joe. Thank yeah, you. Thank he you. did. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. So it all falls apart, Joe. <laughs> On administrator's report. Uh, thank you. So I, I made reference earlier um, to the contract that um, I was able to execute with um, Eric A. Kincher of CPA LLC. So to give you the particulars, as I mentioned on the Saturday budget workshop, um, there is a uh, chapter, uh, excuse me, there is an exempt uh, contract because we're relying predominantly on Eric A. Kincher of CPA LLC to continue to provide training for staff in the Treasury Collector's Office. As you know, we've had obviously turnover. We have um, some great folks in there uh, that are newer. Uh, and as part of this, it allows um, a staff member, Ms. Ackridge, as you appointed earlier, um, to also be uh, recognized as our treasurer collector. So uh, the total for this contract is $48,000, and it covers the period March 1st through June 30, 2024. We are relying upon funds available from the vacant treasurer collector um, salary line. Thank you, Joe. And then secondly, um, something I... Um, um, almost announced last week, which would have been incorrect, but very uh, pleased to finally be able to announce that uh, town's first ever assistant wastewater superintendent uh, has been hired. So uh, Jonathan Long, who comes to us from the town of Chatham, <coughs> meaning that's where he lives, he comes directly to us from Weston and Sampson, uh, and he's working in Chatham. So uh, Mr. Long has a great background in this role, and I know everybody uh, can now breathe a sigh of relief. Um, and um, Jonathan is going to be joining us. Uh, we expect him to start March 28th, so I'm excited about that. Oh, great. great. And great. then uh, last but not least, I executed another 30B contract. Uh, this is one that Assistant Town Administrator Megan Eldridge has been working directly with Bob Doan of the um, Historic District Historical Commission on, and it's a contract for Marquee Architecture, LLC. Uh, what they are doing is helping the Historic District Historical Commission with their ongoing historic property inventory. 
So um, the contract was awarded to Marquee uh, Architecture LLC. Uh, they were the most uh, responsive and responsible to the uh, request for um, proposals. Uh, the contract comes in at $33,800, uh, which is under uh, the amount that was available through the um, Article 31 of the 2020 Annual Town Meeting. So great to have them on board and great to have them under budget. That concludes my report. Thank you, Joe. Uh, select board report. Don? Nothing. Jeff? I'll just say uh, again, good luck to the girls varsity ice hockey and the boys basketball team at Montemoy High moving forward into the next round. So good luck to them. I have nothing. That's all. I have nothing. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.